Yeah, so the pushiness is where it's uncomfortable for the buyer. Okay. I really don't like to be in a position where I'm uncomfortable as a buyer. So when salespeople are like that with me, I feel like I need to go away and probably not come back. Once you go down that path with people like me who are givers, we like to please people, we like to serve. If it's all about you as the seller, that's where a lot of us are not comfortable. And I've never been comfortable with that. And so, you know, like the overcoming objections, Carlos, you know, this, I used to get really good at that because I adopted some things and I decided that some things were not for me. But where you're, where a person can't breathe, everything they is raised for concerns slash objections, and we have an answer for it and there's nothing left, then it's like, well, so what's left here is for us to sign the paperwork. Some think that's a really good place, but sometimes it's not. It really depends on the person across from you. And if they're feeling uncomfortable and gross and they're being led down this path that they don't want to be in, then you know, turning that into a sale or a long-term relationship is a challenge. It's really simple, I think, is that you show interest in the other person. So, so I was talking to a person uh, recently who was in the car industry, and she gave me some numbers and about the data about car sales and the challenges with car salespeople. And it's almost 100%. It's the salesperson is saying, what do I need to do to get you in this car today? Right. We might have heard that once or twice. And they're even saying this after the person says, you know, things like I'm still going to shop around and whatever. And it's like you did not even hear what the person said. So a simple thing that I believe is understanding what the buyer's process is. Right. So if you're going to shop around, I'm going to say, I get it. I shop around, too. I don't buy the first thing I see without checking out the reviews, checking out pricing. I do the same. So now you're putting yourself, I believe, on the same side of the table as the buyer versus it being confrontational. It's you against me and one of us is going to walk away the winner here. And when you have that attitude, it's really, it's like a win. It's not win-win, right? It's out of Stephen Covey's book. So make it win-win, get on the same side of the table. Don't try to oversell. Be happy with building the relationship and letting them go, do their thing, provide consistent value to them. Like maybe here's an article on shopping for cars. Here's something I thought of you and send them something else, right? Now you're building this trust factor. And when they come back and they, they can say, you know, Carlos, out of all the ones I bought, your price, I'd like to do business with you, but your price is a little higher. Um, is there anything you can do? I grew up in sales that sales and marketing were supposed to, you know, have the, I'm pushing my fist together here, is that there is conflict because sales would complain about marketing, that the leads were terrible and marketing were telling, complaining about sales is that we're giving you good leads. You can't close a door. And so, yes, I'm familiar with that, but I've learned that really that you have to combine the two, get those two departments working together, make it one department if you can, and make it, I, someone coined the word smarketing, where this, and I just love that, is because all of us who are in sales should be branding ourselves. We should be on social media as to who we are, what we do, how we serve people, taking pictures of our clients, promoting our clients, right? So now that people see us and they're saying, wow, that Lisa is constantly sharing information about her clients and promoting them, it's free advertising, right? So we have, all have this opportunity and the vast majority of salespeople do not do this because they look at that as they're not getting paid for it. So find the entrepreneurial salesperson that wants to make a career out of their sales. Those are the ones that are going to excel. Become the best listener. That when your customer is saying, 
that they're going to shop around and all they get are salespeople who are selling and talking and then they get you and you're asking questions after they say something and say things like, tell me more. That sounds amazing. Or that sounds incredible. What else happened? Tell me more. And you just keep doing this and you're listening so that you can tie in the previous statement to your next question. This is a craft. This is not something that you just need to be a better listener. This is stuff you need to work on. You work on it like you mentioned, Carlos. You work on it in relationships. You work on it with your parents, your roommates. This becomes, in my mind, your differentiator. You've been listening to the B2B Revenue Executive Experience. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time. 